Good morning everybody, this is Victoria. Welcome back to another episode of art videos. And today we're gonna do something new, something really special, and we are going to talk about art. And not just any art, we are going to talk about Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot and the impact of his Italian landscape paintings. He is a very famous um, French painter from the 19th century that was very much inspired by later on artists and like present artists that look up to him for his landscape paintings from French to Italian. This is actually a really cool and amazing article that I read recently from a very good friend of mine and he sent it to me and I really loved it to the point that I saved it to my favorite part. So I want to make sure that I have that with me at all times so I can actually go back and look at it. But today I want to share my experience after reading that article and mentioning what I've learned from reading this article and how it was helpful for me with my own personal creativity and just art process and when it comes to creating um, a new piece and all that. So I will share that with you. So here are some key things that I learned from this really awesome art article is number one, incorporating the past in the present. And that actually can relate a lot to because I did do some of that in my previous um, artworks and paintings. And one of them, for example, is the girl with a silver earring. And this has always been one of my favorite painting of all times. And uh, the reason why I say that I can relate to where you incorporate the past into the present is that this one is inspired from Vermeer's the girl with a pearl earring and uh, as you can see the relatable resemblance of it it's kind of like a modern way of looking at the girl with the pearl earring and it was actually really inspiring because I love that painting so much that Vermeer's paintings have always been a big part of my life and also my art journey and all that stuff and I learned a lot from him by doing master copies of his paintings including girl with a pearl earring. Um, but just kind of seeing where you actually could learn a lot from the old masters because they've been there, they've tried it out, and even the old masters learn from older masters, which is really interesting how we as artists and as people, we, we learn a lot from old and previous um, experiences from previous artists that we actually could learn quite a bit from it. We're smart enough to actually be able to take and learn from what we see and actually trying to either replicate that or actually adding it in into our own works. Now the second thing that I want to mention that was a key point and that was really helpful for me after reading this article is basically closely observing. So Koro closely observed his landscape paintings in order to actually um, make it not only look good though, but you actually feel like you're in that moment, in that spot, and you're kind of seeing or kind of standing beside him and seeing that same view as he did while he was painting it. So that also relates to me a lot because as a hyper-realistic painter and just hyper-realistic artist, we need to focus, hyper-focus while we're painting. So the observation that Koro had and the sense of um, details that he had, even though he took only key elements and maintaining the fundamentals and the most important things and leaving out everything else that was probably not necessary um, and which he found that was not relevant enough for him to actually keep it. That's also something very similar to hyperrealistic painting, except for <laughs> we're kind of like the opposite. We have the same, we have like the same um, concentrated and, and focused, like the, the ability to capture the details and also um, applying the details, but applying it in a very different way though. 
but the key idea that I want you guys to learn about is that the amount of focus that you put in in a painting and also observing that's the that's the most important part because we paint and we draw what we see so if you're not able to see it then it's going to be really hard for you to recreate it and paint it and also being able to see as an artist now as an artist we kind of see light shading colors shapes and tones a lot differently than how usually people would actually look at them because on a day-to-day -day basis we would actually just look and glance and then and then that's pretty much it right we don't actually just sit there and just like stare for like six hours and just seeing it's like oh look there's all these like subtle changes in lighting there's so many different varieties of colors in this one spot and we have the time to observe we have the time to actually take a look at it and kind of see how it's built how it's constructed and then only that way we can actually take that and express it through our own paintings so the plan is for me after reading this article there were a few things that i can actually add into my own paintings and my own uh, artworks is that I could actually study old portrait paintings and actually see what the old masters did and how they would pose people, what colors they used, um, how they balanced out the composition and also just um, the application of the paint too. So a lot of these things are very helpful for us to learn and see if we can actually incorporate that into our own paintings and our own creation. Since Corot had a really good observing and precision of capturing the moment because the day changed a lot quicker, mostly when you're painting in plein air, and uh, basically what happens is that weather changes, light changes, and the mo light changes your subject and your shadows and then your colors would also change. So Koro did a really great job at taking and being able to observe and catch the most important things in paintings and also kind of adding um, the essentials only. So basically having the correct color, um, the correct placement, and then the correct shape and the correct tone in order to actually be able to capture that moment, right? So it's kind of like a, a camera that would actually flash and, and take that and remembering it. But how we could actually use this in our own painting, or at least in my own painting, is to actually have more precision. So precision is the most important thing. The speed would come after precision. The key idea is that you want to make sure that you're precise enough because every time that you do it, you know that's going to be spot on correct. And then also this is also a reminder for students as well and for everyone who wants to learn why fundamentals are really, 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 really important because if we don't have fundamentals, then it's going to be really hard to um, do anything else beyond that, like adding um, more emotions and also kind of setting the mood and actually giving this a feeling because the moment that we have the good fundamentals we have the correct value the correct color the correct placement and the correct shape then everything will actually fall into place on its own so i can kind of see with today's culture <laughs> and just today's society where a lot of people want instant gratification and everything has to be like done in like a few seconds and they're not willing to put in the time into it to learn and to observe and all that stuff but uh, these things take time in order for you to actually absorb what you learned and also understanding what you absorbed and learned and also being able to practice it and putting it into your artwork. Feel free to subscribe to my art YouTube channel and also feel free to click the like button and also feel free to comment below and tell me what you thought about this brand new video and also just sharing your thoughts on this art article and what you've learned and discovered through it. Okay, and that's it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this new insight about this brand new article of 
Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot and his impact on Italian landscape paintings. And hopefully these tips are helpful for you guys, so feel free to check out that really cool article. It was super fun to read and I hope you guys would also get inspiration and also motivation to check out some old masterpieces and actually adding that into your own personal artwork. Okay, and that's it. I shall see you guys in the next video and looking forward to share more insights, more thoughts and ideas and ways we could actually learn and use the knowledge that we get from all around the world. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! stare for like six hours and just seeing it's like oh look there's all these like subtle changes in lighting there's so many different varieties of colors in this one spot and there's different directions of uh, of the shape and how it would actually um cover um this whole shape that didn't make very much sense <laughs> but um